So hello YouTube, this is WF7i Homebrew. I am recording this on my computer using a very old Radio Shack microphone from the 1980s. And I'm using PowerPoint to help me record audio off my computer screen. Um, this is a program called Puff, and it's a program that is used to um, model microstrip. Uh, which is a type of microwave circuit. Um, it can also be used to build uh, or to kind of design filters, and that's what I've used it for. Um, there's a lot to explain how this works. I'm not going to go into that right now, um, but uh, I wanted to just show you that this here is a 40 meter filter that I designed several years ago, 2014. And you can see that kind of at the center frequency here around seven megahertz. Uh, the S11 is uh, minus 20 dB, indicating a really small amount of uh, return loss. Uh, so basically a good SWR, you could kind of think of it as. Uh, S21 means that you know we're getting all the energy through uh, that we're putting in. So it's passing through all the energy at seven megahertz. And uh, really nothing is being reflected. So um, this is the graph here. Uh, kind of the blue line is showing you that this is kind of the filter response. And uh, so pretty good. Um, and that's what I used in my previous 40 meter receiver that I built that's based on the same ME602 chip. And it helped a lot to get rid of uh, external noise and unwanted signals that were outside of the band. So I'm going to probably build this filter again um, for the new rig, the tri-band rig. <clears throat> um, don't really see why I would want to change this. Looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is go into these settings here. And what's nice about Puff is you can kind of uh, experimentally build your own, design your own filter. Um, kind of the, the general layout of these bandpass filters is you kind of have these capacitors to ground inductors in series, capacitors to ground, inductors in series, etc. Um, <clears throat> this one's a little bit different. I think I just experimentally found that I had a capacitor to ground, I put a uh, inductor in series, and then a capacitor in series, and it gave me this really nice response. So you just have to kind of play with it. It's kind of fun. Um, it's not a uh, it's not a cookbook type of a filter where you just, you know, like a Chevy Chev or something where you use a formula that tells you exactly, you know, which capacitors and inductors to use and whatnot. I mean, I could do that, um, but it's actually kind of fun and easy to just kind of play with this and come up with different responses. So I can go in here and choose, you know, different lumped inductor. I don't know if I can do it on the fly here or not. Um, I'm still kind of trying to relearn how to use this tool because it's been a long time since I actually did anything with this tool. Um, Let's see here. So if I hit function F3 and get into this thing here. So if I made this instead of 12.4 microhenries, if I said 22.4, then I go up here and go to plot. And uh, I think I just hit P. Uh, it says number is missing. Um, oh, somehow I changed that by accident. So. Um, let's see, function F2, and you can see that really messed up the uh, filter response <laughs> pretty bad right now. Um, so my S21 degraded to about a minus 20 dB, S11 is minus 0, 06. Still pretty good return loss, but I'm losing most of my signal. It's not really making it through the filter now. So anyway, that's just a kind of a quick and dirty. Um, there's, of course, a lot of theory behind filter design. Um, I did take a graduate level course in filters, no, not in filters, but in microwave circuits. And it's been a few years ago now, and I've forgotten a lot of it. Um, but uh, there's textbooks out there that you can go through and kind of you know, kind of understand roughly what these values components should be. Um, but uh, anyway, 
might be more of a confusing video than it's worth. I don't know, but uh, this is kind of the, the way that I go about it. Um, there's, of course, filter design software packages that are custom just for doing filters. This program is not just for filters. This can be used to design any sort of random circuit that you want to do, you know, LC circuits, and you can put resistors in there and everything, and it'll model it over RF frequency span. Um, it's, it's really pretty powerful, um, but it's uh, also extremely basic. This was written in DOS in the 1990s, and I'm running something called DOS Box in order to be able to run it on a PC, you know, in 2020, um, and sort of emulate DOS. Anyway, I guess getting back to my overall uh, overall uh, goal here, I'm going to try to design a filter for 20, 40, and 80 meters. 41 is already designed, as I showed before, um, so I got to do one for 20 and 80. I was having a great deal of difficulty finding a broadband transformer um, uh, toroid core that would allow me to transform 50 ohms impedance of the antenna to 1500 ohms across all three bands, 80, 40, and 20. Um, the core, toroid cores that I have in my junk box apparently worked really well for 80 and 40, but 20 meters they did not work at all. Um, they would not, there was no transformer action at all, and I think it's due to the type of core material, and it just wasn't suitable for 20 meters apparently. So I put in an order for another toroid core that I've used in a, another circuit, and I know it should work for 20 meters. And uh, when that comes in, I'll be able to design a transformer for that for the input to the 602. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to try to design these filters. Uh, because without filters, that radio really is not going to work. It's just going to be overloaded with garbage. So anyway, let's see if this video works. Um, and uh, that's about it. Uh, let's see if I can figure out how to turn this thing off now. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks for watching.